Okay, well, uh, today on um, our YouTube channel, we have a special guest. This is Dave Powers. Say hey, Dave. How's it going, guys? And uh, Dave has a, a uh, I was about to say nonprofit. I'm <laughs> definitely not nonprofit. Has a for profit company. Uh, yeah. In, um, hold on one second. Um, has a for profit company out in Portland, Oregon. And uh, if you're watching this video, you probably know a little bit about Dave Powers. I've heard of him. So, Dave, why don't you go ahead and just give a little bit brief uh, uh, um, description of what your company does and a little bit about what you hope to gain from objective personality. Sure. So we have got into the personality Myers-Briggs space kind of indirectly years ago, just kind of started off as, off as a hobby like anybody else. And then... Uh, the past few years, we've been trying to apply the scientific method to some degree to tracking Carl Jung's eight functions, and that kind of led to this development of 16 types, the 32 all the way to 512. Uh, so we play this game where Shani and I type the same people in separate rooms to see if we can get the same uh, type number kind of in an objective way. And then from there, we share our information online through YouTube, through a paid members class, and we talk to clients uh, during the day. Um, and so that's been kind of our current personality business at this stage. Uh, long term, um, and, you know, starting at the end of this year, the goal is to get one or two people hired to full time to train. Building up, you know, two, four, six, eight, ten, eventually a hundred different people that can do this. And therefore now have a, a large team to be able to take this to the next levels of the scientific community and, you know, onto the world stage. So that's the plan. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I had a couple of internet issues, which I never have, of course, but it shouldn't be, but if, yeah. if something happens, it happens, but that never happens. Of course it's happening now. Chaos found us. <laughs> it, it doesn't bother me too bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, okay, cool. Um, you know, one of the things that brought me to uh, your, your business is I got in this four or five years ago as I was doing my dissertation on personality type and leadership. And um, so I got into the little subculture, you know. Yeah. And, uh, after a while, I got annoyed with it. I guess it's the tribe issues, right? I just got annoyed with it because yeah. uh, there's these experts talking. And I'm like, you know, where do you get your authority to be right. an expert? Like, just because you've read this and that and, and you've, you know, come up with some some cool memes, you know, yeah. where do you get this? And so, um, and I, I, somehow of course I got linked to your old, uh, Dave Powers videos and I was like, who's this guy? <laughs> <laughs> he sounds pretty good. This guy actually knows what he's seems to know what he's talking about. It's confidently at least, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so then he just like disappeared for a while, which I'm sure everybody keeps saying that. And then all of a sudden a new one popped up. I was like, huh? And I watched it. And then I saw that y'all had some, some uh, research into this and you've actually had some authority. I was like, okay, this is what I'm looking for. Yeah. There's some grounding here. There's something I can actually stand on because if I'm going to blast and teach something, right. I feel like I got to have some type of uh, authority there. And so that's what is great about this. And so, um, so one thing that annoys me is, is the experts who don't really have that. And so I know I'm just not interested in, their opinions. Right. You know, right. Uh, I totally know what you mean. Yeah. Like I, I speak fluent NF hippie. Like I, I am a, I am a know-it-all NF hippie consume last. So I had that to the worst of the worst degree, you know, like an apostle Paul situation. Like yeah. I was the worst know-it-all. And this is from my twenties all the way up to my early thirties of I, so I know that when I see it, because I, I understand how people can get caught up into that, where they're finding something that is subjectively awesome to themselves, and yeah. they just want to make the jump that this works for everybody, and therein lies the mistake of not really tracking all the, the facts of the reality, and you know, taking in the scientific method, and being safe, and saying, allegedly and possibly it's this, rather than yeah. thus saying me it's this. So I appreciate yeah. that, because we do work hard to make things more clear in the objective world. I mean, when you type 2,000 people with the same system, you're finding something. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know, it's, something's happening, right? And so, yeah. um, and so what's frustrating for me then is to, is, to, is to see people who will talk about it. Because now that I'm a part of that, I feel some ownership toward it, like some right. loyalty, right? Yeah. And, to it. And, I'm, and, you know, they'll just act like it's another way. And I'm like, well, it is another way, but it's really not. 
<laughs> right, right. No, we've been enjoying, like having done business before, we've yeah. been enjoying kind of the early years. Like this is underground. It's still small. It's not mainstream. Like, and looking at it very honestly from the other side, like, you know, like, like you and I know each other, but like, say we're just a couple of strangers. We were in the personality space and you're just thumbing yeah. through the internet and you come across a racket like this. You'd be like, I, I don't know. This, this seems a little too good to be true or something's going on. Like, I completely understand. So yeah, yeah. Join the small stage while we can. Yeah, yeah. It's it's either really good or it's like the most elaborate scam in like world history other than like Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Know? So we, we really welcome like we welcome and respect the skeptical attitude. That's yeah. that's exactly what we're promoting, you know, like, hey, yes, come over here to Portland, Oregon and look at what we have and you tell me what you're seeing, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's so, great. Yeah. Um so so how have you seen OP kind of settle, quote unquote settle in the community? Uh, as you've seen it, like the niche, like what, what have you seen as you've watched it kind of unfold over this past year? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. It's a very big question. Um, gosh, a lot of different ways I could answer that. Like just, I guess from personally, I see first the, the, the distinction of people that really want to make a change in life, that really want to start taking responsibility for their life and start, you know, growing and giving in their selves and their relationships and their jobs. And like, the majority of the people that come to us are in that state and yeah. to, to some degree, you know, like we, we are kind of very aggressive with our videos and stuff that I think scares away a lot of the, the weak people that are just kind of dabbling around and yeah, so probably. The that come to us are more centered. And like, yeah. I, I lose contrast of that until I like talk to people on the outside, you know, whether it's yeah. old friends or family or neighbors or random people on the internet that are, that are not in the, kind of driving themselves situation. I really can see the contrast of how much there's people that are kind of just living their life, dabbling around versus people that are using some kind of tool, whether it's ops or something at church or some other self growth thing, or yeah. self whatever to where they're like, I want to start taking ownership, you know, Jordan Peterson style stuff, you know? So that's a big thing that I've seen settle. The second thing is when it comes down to the, the practicality of the work, the scientificness of the work, is I'm seeing that long term, the most likely the the majority of the demand will be on like the corporate side. Yeah, probably. Uh, I'm seeing that with Myers Briggs as well. Like, <clears throat> um, the average person, like you know, like I, I make the joke, like if you were to tell your mom what she really is like, or you know, your Aunt Sally, like they don't they don't want to know. They're 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 doing a lot of work to not see themselves. So like yeah. the general public, yeah at scale they don't they're not going to be as interested in this where corporations or government or schools are going to be more interested in being able to get some idea what somebody is you know so i'm seeing that kind of corporate versus private sector distinction a little bit yeah and i think when you're hiring people i think you're constantly typing people that you yeah you don't know the you don't know the if someone doesn't know the terms they're intuitively typing them because they like they're like okay i'm hiring a receptionist right I know what i don't want right and i know who i need to be in that position and so now I can yeah. verbalize what that is now. Like I need a double feminine IJ or something in there, right? Right. Uh, yeah. But, or I, don't, I need a masculine sensor to do this, uh, you know, the, our, our finances. Um, yeah. I wouldn't verbalize that, but I'm kind of like, okay, here's what I need. I'm right. Sure. So I think that you're right about that. Yeah, we're, we're seeing that. So like uh, one of the things we want to do is, is because we see that, that governments and corporations will, will get, you know, look at the Facebook, like how much people, the corporations want to get all this information about people. So we see this being used as a very aggressive tool or even a weapon in the future. So it's like, yeah, it's, it could happen. Why, it's why we're dumping it first on the internet and we'll always have it open to the private sector. So it's like, hey, here's this information. It's free for yeah. you to use. It's, it's access for, you, for anybody to use. And if you're not interested, that's fine. But do know that there are other people out there that may be using it against you, you know, so we that, want to keep it open and free, you know. That's exactly right. Awesome. Um, one of the things I've noticed, I got on the Facebook group really early after I was typed, and that was pretty cool. And, um, and what made the Facebook group, what made it kind of annoying for me was there were people joining who had not been typed, objective. Right. And so you have these people who are having these big, you know, realizations of who they are and they're kind of like, there's, right. you know, they're counseling each other through it. And then you have these people who are like, I'm an ENFP. I'm like, right. Right. I don't have patience for that. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, and so I had a yeah. little bit of that. And then you'd have someone who did get typed and then, you know, they would have to like be talked off the ledge and all this right. kind of thing. And it's like, oh, okay. So I just kind of got out of that after a while. I'm sure it's still good. 
But one thing I've noticed from that group is this guy, Benjamin in Israel, I think, who's been yeah, doing yeah. videos. I came across yeah. it because somehow YouTube's the nomenclature that you use popped up as a title. And I was like, whoa, what is that? And I started watching his stuff. One thing that has been extremely impressive is the people. You, right. you know this more than anybody. Everybody who's gone through the class is, is a talented, impressive person. Yeah. Most of the I feel thing. like. Like, yeah. I think you could take your class and start a company with everybody in the class and like be extremely successful. Yeah, I was noticing the same thing from watching his videos as well. Yeah. I, I'm wondering too how much the, you know, kind of a blind spot here, but the SF, yeah. the marketing, the, like the, the, the style that we're communicating on, I think is scaring away a certain type of people and attracting another Probably type so. of people. I'm noticing the same thing. I remember... You know, I remember um, when, when Rick Warren's Purpose Driven Church book came out years ago, like late yeah. 90s, whatever it was. I remember going through that book and really, because it was the first time like marketing hit church. Yeah. And then we went down to Saddleback Church in, in Southern California, it's where I lived. And I remember like on page 64, or whatever it was, he had Saddleback Sam and he had this like profile of a person. Yeah. It was like his target demographic. And I remember seeing everywhere at the church, like, like wow, his, his marketing matched his target perfectly. Yeah. And so I'm wondering if there's something like that going on where we are attracting um, people that are pretty yeah. intelligently aggressive, you know? Well, you know, I'm a we'll get to this. This is another question I want to get into this idea of, are you tracking what people are attracted to? Yeah. Uh, so as a double feminine, I'm fine with that. Um, I'm attracted to the masculine uh, kind of, it, yeah. you know, my wife has, has got some of that, you know, even though she's yeah, yeah. smiley and pretty, but she's... <laughs> Right. <laughs> so to me, it's like, wow, who is this? This is a challenge yeah. kind of deal. And so I wonder if that has something to do with it. Like, this is a challenge, right? Uh, something different. This is something to work toward. Um, that might be something to do with that. I, I think so. I think so. I think there'd be people out there that understand this better than us, but I think, I think it is something like that going on a little bit. Yeah. It's kind of the same. You remember, I, I don't know if you were in this community when this happened, but you remember the, the big church they had in Seattle where Mark Driscoll was the pastor? No. This is pretty recently. He's, okay. he's qualified now, uh, but it was the Morris Hill Church, and he just was really, like, unconventional. And he would say really – he would say things that was just like, what? Sure, yeah. And he reached nothing but young men. Right. Because he was so aggressive. Right. And right, yeah. so, I, you know, I, that might be a similar kind of situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. Great. So what about, like – with the, this is inter I'm interested in this too. Like, you know how there's people that like you connect with and you want to hang out with, and then there's people you just don't want to ever be around. <laughs> yeah. You know, like there's just like a, an attractiveness. Now I'm not even talking about like, um, like relationships, like my wife, I met my wife. I was like, I want to be around this woman all the time, you know? Right. But then there's other people, just friends of yours that you just want to hang out with. Are you seeing any type of like pairing of like, whether it's the sexuals and the modalities, whatever it is, are you seeing like magnet type stuff like what are you seeing that kind of stuff is that oh gosh tribe tribe related dynamics yeah um, yeah uh, let's i i am seeing um people definitely pairing up like we'll see them come through on our emails or we'll talk to them on the phone or whatever and then we'll realize that oh they're really good friends with this other person in the class or whatever okay um i i, I don't know i because i haven't really looked at that or thought about that or tried to analyze that the only thing that what? comes to mind yeah is it seems to be just it seems to be largely like people in the same kind of chapter in life, if that makes sense. Oh, I'm sorry. What, that's a good answer. But, but I guess what I was asking was like in real life, people who are, who hang out together, who are married, oh, okay. like who are friends, are, are you seeing an opposite type of, like, yeah. I'm not going to probably want to hang out with a double feminine ESTJ. Like I think I'd be bored. We, we do see, I can see the extremes like with, okay. with uh, relationships. We do see patterns in relationships for sure. We'll see okay. that the, the masculine will date the feminine. Okay. The IJ will date the EP, the EJ will date the IJ or IP or whatever. Okay. And, and then that's, it's not always necessarily literal based upon like actual type, but yeah. like it seems to be the archetype is stronger. So someone plays the masculine, someone plays the feminine, someone plays the chaos, somebody plays the control. I see um, and it could be, you know what I mean? It could be different. You could, like I've, I've seen myself, like when I'm around other very controlling people i play the chaos monkey i just can't help yeah. it i just see what they're doing and i get all childish and i just want to knock their cards over but then yeah. around everybody else i'm playing the ij and everyone else is knocking my table over so we'll see for sure the attractions of um it's it's largely the the sexual energies uh the temperaments the animals 
those opposites um, often attracting. So then, and then there's attracting, but then we'll see like buddies that are like more similar, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I was, like a, my yeah. best friend's probably very similar to me. Yeah. 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 I remember reading a book called uh, the way of the superior man by David data. And he had, he had kind of laid out this picture of like, Hey, when you're dating and this, this I think like applies to not just date sexual relationships, but also like friendships as well. You know? Yeah. I think he was kind of laying out like, you have your opposite where you get that sparky and then you'll have your same where you get the buddy and there's to kind of be aware of the, the spec, the spectrum there. Right. You know? Yeah. My best friend, I'm no, he's double feminine. We never have an argument. Like we never talked about anything ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, let's go hang out. Okay. Let's go hang out. And we hung right. out and we home and it's like, okay, we're done. Yeah. Yeah. Same with me. Some of my closest friends are closer to my type. Yeah. So it's just like you can relax so you can talk like a weirdo and they're not going to, you don't have to like interpret it. Yes, for them or whatever. Free zone, right. Yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A couple more questions. Um, all right. So there's the old, what I call the old guard Myers-Briggs people who are on Myers-Briggs people who are on YouTube, Twitter, mm -hmm. Tumblr, which is like the wild west of, <laughs> yeah. Know. Um, have you, have you been able to con convert any of these guys, these people who were leading years ago, have any of these people, I'm not, I'm not looking for names, but have they come around to this kind of thing or are they just, uh, kind of, yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah, sure. Like we've, we've d made a conscious effort to reach out to all of the people in our YouTube personality community. So, um, Megan Lavota and, you know, just different, uh, people that are kind of already doing YouTube channels. I can't, you know, yeah. sorry, I can pull up all the sensory right now, but like, yeah, you know, the, the people that are in kind of our, our same space and we just kind of reach out as friends and yeah. kind of let them know what we're, what we're doing. And then, you know, they're like, oh, that's interesting to some degree or whatever. Um, we are seeing, like, we're definitely growing. So we're getting more people coming to us every day than, than not, you know? Yeah. Um, but what I have noticed is that, and I really, really empathize with and respect that, like, like we're starting a war by coming in with absolutes. And I really yeah. want to be respectful of that because the personality community over the years is allowed to go off into all these little tangents, which is good. That's how, that's how you find answers is everybody goes in different directions. And so everybody's kind of set up their own little camp, their own little tent in all these different areas. Yeah. And we're coming in on this line right here, which kind of alienates people on the other side. And so I absolutely understand and respect how certain people are like, wait a minute, if I don't fight against the ops guys, then everything that I've built, everything that I'm selling, everything that I've been right. saying falls apart. And, that, and, they, and they are in a really screwed position long term, you know, because once something like numbers and science comes into a very abstract community, it's, it's yeah. like a this rock game is going to start eating it up. So in the meantime, we try and be very uh, empathetic of that and very conscious of that. And then also encourage people to to talk in in uh you know allegedly terms like we have a lot of friends like let's say megan lavota because i brought her up like she's she's into astrology and stuff and like i've had great mm -hmm. conversations with her of like just saying hey what keeps you out of trouble from these science guys or you know somebody like us let's say is just say this is what works for me this has yeah. been effective for me like you don't have to put a stamp of this is truth everywhere you, yeah. can, you can share I read an astrology book or whatever, had an astrology thing, and it worked for me. You know, you're not slamming down that this is absolute truth or what people should or should not do. Yeah. And that is a safer way, you know. So, but yeah. yes, we do see, we do see little, um, you know, camps and, you know, I'm sure we're going to get into plenty of wars and <laughs> fights over the years. Yeah, so, you've yeah. already worked out all your tribe issues and control issues. You don't, that's not going to bother you any. Uh, it, it, do, it does, it's, it, it doesn't bother internally, but like, yeah. it, it is, it is hard. It is hard to go through. It is hard to, you yeah. know, to see, see a group uh, or people mad at you or upset at you or, or, or misunderstanding you or whatever the rest. So, yeah. 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 Awesome. All right. Uh, a couple more here. Let me see. Okay. I've already done that one. Um, of course, I have a script, of course. Right? Yeah. Um, Prepared. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> so, of all the terminology you've come up with, you know, the, uh, like the animals or that you've coined or whatever. Um, yeah the modalities, the sexuals, are there, is there any of them that, which one do you think you could change what you call it in the future? Would you change yeah. or something uh, like that? Yeah. Um, the that, one I thought of would be 
like sleep, like it's almost like processing, right? Right. But I don't know if you think right. if you call it processing, I'm thinking of like processing food. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Um, I, I'm open to watching how all of the terms work on the SF. And so like the kind of the framework we have, if we change sleep, then we got to change play. We got to, we want to make sure that things are going in a coin. One yeah. thing that we saw, I guess we're, let me kind of back up. One thing that we're coming from is watching the Myers-Briggs, the complete and total debacle by saying like tertiary function and judging function and perceiving like, oh my gosh, stop saying we're or, like, conscientiousness in the big five. Like what? Like you can't, you can't yes. get away with that. The shadow. <laughs> yeah. You can't say these weird, yeah. crazy, you know, psychology college words yeah. and think you're going to be able to sell this to the average person. No. And so we, we were aware of this when we started. And so we, we had it as a goal to hijack the words, like as we were going through the 2000 people that we were typing and like we were stealing the words that they were saying. So tribe, came oh, up yeah. a lot. Um, you know, organized control came up a lot. Uh, you know, so we would use simpler words rather than that, rather than judging or whatever. Because judging was not coming up. Um, and, yeah, so like we're, like consume came up a lot. Um, and so we were trying our best to pull from words that the, the popu the population was already using. And so in that kind of framework, if we're getting more votes of people saying as they're learning Amartya going, Hey, I think sleep could be worded something different. Mm -hmm. Like I want, I'm, I'm open to hearing what a large majority of people would say this would work more on because the goal is as we take this larger scale, when people hear these coins and phrases right away we want them to be able to quickly connect with okay know mm -hmm. what you're saying you know sleep that's eh, a little hard but like processing or introspective or whatever that connects better so that i feel like that's kind of like one of the things we're keeping an eye on in the first few years because as awkward as it would be to change the phrases now it's much yeah. more practical to do that in the first five years than the next 10 years you know so yeah 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 no that makes perfect sense yeah um no i think that's good um, okay. Let's see. I got one more thing on here. What, what do you envision 2020 and 2021 looking like for, um, OP? Um, slow, slow moving. Just the, the first, the first, what is it? Uh, two to five years typically in kind of a startup business is kind of the, you know, the startup phase before mm -hmm. you reach the, you know, out of control growth stage. And um, having been in the RC business, we, we grew a little too much, a little too fast, a little too soon. And it, that sounds great. That sounds fun. But like mm -hmm. business ended up dying over too much growth too soon. It just took years to just kill it off, you know. So hmm. we are really enjoying trying to stretch out the startup stage, the keep it calm stage, the mellow stage as long as we can. Two years, three years, four years, five years, maybe, maybe not quite five years. But so the first phase is going to be a few years and that is just getting every single little tiny specific, you'll appreciate this, specific detailed thing in reality absolutely systematized. Because right now, if I were to hire a person or a group of people right now to start scaling up, mm -hmm. there's probably, I, would, I don't know, 30% or maybe more of the things that I do and the procedures that I do and the habits that I do that I would be copying and pasting my slop and my inefficiency. There's, yeah. there's, Jobs that I'm doing that take eight hours to do, and then by next year, they're only going to take 20 minutes because I'm seeing the majority of the work that we've done. We've been able to systematize it and get it down. So yeah. I've got more than half of our procedures ready to be copied over in a very efficient way. Like here, copy how we do this. And we need to get that last little bit finalized because then once people start coming in, we need to you know follow a business structure of have very clear manuals and an orderly way of like, here's how you make a YouTube thumbnail. Here's how you do research. Here's how you do this, yeah. this. And um, so that's, that's like I was saying, our goal for this year, 2019, by the end of this year, is to have one, let's just say one person hired on a, like a serious part-time or even a full-time basis mm -hmm. and to kind of start that prototype of, all right, let's see if we can train the first person and not screw this up. And if we can, <laughs> then let's go to two. You know? Yeah, that is kind so of a big, a big jump because, I mean, you and Shannon obviously are speaking the same language, right? Yeah. And so you should be getting, if you're doing your job right, you should be getting close. Yeah. So getting an outside yeah. person would be, is the jump, I guess. Yeah. Oh, we, we, we talk about it almost every day. Like, oh, we can't wait till we get a couple people hired. But it's like, we'll, we'll, we'll come from a state of like weakness of like, I'm getting overwhelmed with my work. I just wish there was somebody here to save me. It's like, uh, 
if you if I've got all of my stuff figured out and systematized, it's not overwhelming. It's just boring. You're just sitting there pulling the same levers. Why not have yeah. somebody else come in here and pull that lever? So we're putting the pressure on us. Um, thankfully, just we're very thankful to have run some businesses before. Shannon with the photography business, me with the RC, both were good and then both were incredibly bad. So we have a PhD on how to not do this. Yeah. We both feel very young in our early 40s, or she's 38, you know, we're gonna be turning 38 about the same time you are. Yeah. You're turning 40. Yeah. And um, so we feel like just very like we got plenty of time. Just go nice and slow. Don't 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 wreck this thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited about my 40s, man. I, I struggled with 35 really bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it is, but I was like 35 you know but uh, right. I'm, kind of, I'm excited about it now yeah me too i really enjoy 40s it's my favorite decade so far yeah um okay um so um last question we'll let you go um so obviously this youtube channel for me is like a little hobby kind of thing i mean i yeah. don't have time to do it but i'm doing it because i want to do it right right and so i've learned how to kind of let myself do that which is really awkward to mention and <laughs> embarrassing but i've learned that you know through uh my typing and everything um but um what would you give someone who's starting out a youtube channel even if it's just for fun not many people are starting a youtube channel who are expecting to to have you know you know 10,000 subscribers, yeah. right? What advice do you give them for other than, you know, having some level of, of um, uh, not stability, but um, consistency other than that, what, yeah. what would you tell them? I would say the biggest thing I see with people is they get too into it emotionally at first. And so if it doesn't go good and they, it crashes, they go bad and all that stuff. Yeah. The thing that I've really seen working for myself and for other people in so many different areas is just the thing of diversification, like of, of keeping your, full-time job, keeping your boring job, keep a job that you don't like that's paying the bills to some degree. Yeah. And more you can do something like YouTube or any other creative project like that on a skunk works basis, you know, like the military where they're like, look, we're, we're playing around with these weird planes out in the desert and they don't work and that's okay. Just get off of us. Let us figure it out. Yeah. And you, you have something off to the side that, you know, and a lot of times too, I would even recommend like maybe the first few months you put the videos all on private or unlisted and you just share them with yourself or a couple of other people because you, you do that for yourself to build up your own system. Because don't worry, you're going to get plenty of pressure from the outside world to That's come right. criticize it. And if you can kind of get yourself used to that slowly over time in a non-need situation, because then if it goes good, great. If it goes bad, that's okay, because this is just kind of an extra credit practice to get sure. your own internal animal trained up. So That's good. And if you need some more views, just make a video with INTJ in the title. And that's true. Upload. Yeah, it's big. The, 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 the Myers-Briggs names, the, the thumbnails, yeah. like it's crazy the stuff that actually does, you know, help get the I news. I think everybody on YouTube is an INTJ. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> Whether they know they are or that they're not. They, right. It's just crazy. I've been looking at, my, at the views of my few videos I've had, and it's like, now why did that one hit? And this one didn't. Like, it's weird. It's like, now that's interesting. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, IJ just exploded. You know, right. and uh, we, we, would you think that for the most part, there's more IJs in this realm or people who think they're IJs? I, I, uh, I, I, I remember many years ago doing some research on that where we would go into the Google research tool where it would like tell you what phrases are being searched, how much, you know? Yeah. And, and at the time that I did this, this was back in 2012. Yeah. Remember at the time, it was, at a, we would we would we put in the search terms for all of the sixteen types, you know, hmm. and it was the four introverts, uh, the four IN, so IN, INTJ, INFJ, INTP, INFP. That's, they were all. That seems about right. They were all super super high, and all the rest were very kind of low, kind of staggered down. Yeah, and I have absolutely watched that. If you and I tell other YouTube channels, and I'll tell you this right now, like when you put, like if you were to put in the title, like say you want to talk about something just if you could just put your know, INTJ, you know, do they do this? And you're like, so you do the INTJ, then do like a colon and then you do this. And then whatever type you can, you know, ESTJ, yeah. do yeah. they do this or something like that? Put that in that first word because yeah. the Google search spider will see that first word more than the last word as well as the human eye. And then maybe put it in the thumbnail. Thumbnails are a big one. Like uh, play around with thumbnails, you know, different yeah. colors and brightness and people on it or whatever. Yeah. Mine are um, black. 
<laughs> yeah. You're in stealth mode. You're in stealth mode. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's funny. It's, um, it's something to play around with. You know, like, well, you'll see us do it as well. Like, we'll try certain thumbnails for, we'll give it, you know, a few months and then like, all right, let's, let's switch things up. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, silly, no, the SF stuff, you know, the stuff you and I aren't going to necessarily think about because well, like, we're thinking, no. like, oh, let me make really good content. You're like, ah, hey, man, this is YouTube. This isn't content. This is, you know, did no. you catch me, you know? I, I, yeah, my 10-year-old daughter dresses me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said, I don't care what it looks, it looks like. It just has to be comfortable. I have to, like, right. I cannot be uncomfortable, right? Right. So I just, yeah, no, I, SF, I, yeah. I have to that's learn. Why, that's why this is, like, goes back, back to what I was saying earlier doing youtube is more of it's more for the the person making it like it is gonna yeah. no matter what type you are you know maybe writing the content is gonna be murder or the thumbnails are gonna be murder like something is gonna be really really hard because you got to hit all four of these corners to be able to get yeah. this to go you know consistently that's what's been it's been such a challenge a self-growth challenge for me getting into youtube early and then just like you know editing your videos watching yourself back like oh that's that's reflective, you know, like that's something you don't want to see every day. Well, so, I've yeah. had some experience with the sermons of online. So I, it wasn't so much of a shock. It was weird to talk to myself. That was the hardest thing. Right. Talking to myself. It's just really odd that, <laughs> but yeah, I'm used to kind of hearing myself and seeing myself, but it is really difficult. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I do think though that the one thing about the OP system that I think is going to get people off the, the old guard off kilter is the, the, the masculines and the feminine things. Yeah, because and I will end with this because as a double feminine, I would never type self type on the 16 as a J, right? right? I would type as a P because it's especially with my with my lead function is feminine. Is that what you're seeing there consistently? Yeah, a totally. Double masculine is not going to have a problem probably in the 16 getting in the 16 or totally. Yeah, exactly. Like ESTJ, for example, like when we're when we're reading the Myers Briggs profiles you know, the various, there's various Myers-Briggs profiles out there, but when we're kind of reading all of them, kind of getting the picture of the archetype of say the ENTJ or ESTJ of what they're yeah. describing, they are describing a, a, uh, a you know, a non-jumper. So T E N I T E S I, you know, top two savers and then yeah. more masculine at the top as kind of their description. So yeah, they come across them like, like yourself, for example, like, like double feminine blast sleep consumed, super like kind of introverted, quiet, non pushy yeah. like, you're not going to come up on as an ESTJ or ENTJ on that Myers Briggs status because of the sexual functions as well as even the animal order, and that's that's why and how we were forced into continuing to uncover other codes because as we're trying to type people, we couldn't we couldn't get a match. You're like Shani and I would would type somebody like you, and one of us may or may not be able to get an ESTJ on a good day, and then one of us yeah. would type INFP, and we're like. Why, why are we spinning on this person? Oh, they're not matching the current definitions. We need to look for more coins. Um, okay. yeah, so, it's, so we found those. And we even in those modalities, there seems to be a big difference because Anita in the class is double masculine. She's my complete but double masculine. Right. But there seems to be a difference between her talking and me talking even. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then as well, like, then what happens when we, you get like 20 different Anitas of the same exact type? You'll, you'll find a spectrum in there, you know, depending uh, on the person, fine. the upbringing. Yeah. That's, that, that, that's too much for me. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's totally like it. Like yeah. if you play the, the, the normal brain is like we want to like kind of like just intuitively, you know, oh, that reminds me of it. Like, we like, just want to reduce it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like we, we have trained ourselves to be a completely super SI when we type, like we're only looking at a coin at a time. Mm -hmm. And, and so like, it's very weird. Cause like, like you'll go in and watch a video of somebody and you got to eliminate everything else and just look for this coin, this coin, this coin. And then once you find this coin, you know, feeler versus thinker, whatever. And then from there, you got to see that coin three or four times and you got to see, you know, yes, they're a thinker and no, yeah. they're, you got to see a positive and a negative. And then you got to see that pattern three times. You got to make sure you do it in a savior demon state. And then all you can write down is thinker over feeler. You have no idea where that is. You have no idea that's TE or TI. It's like just these little teeny tiny parts. It's just, it's, it, 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 the hardest part of all this is just the, the practice of being mm -hmm. able to, you know, uh, to, to do it at one coin at a time and not get overwhelmed by the whole bigger picture of it. That's great. Well, Dave, thanks for taking time to be part of the channel today. Yeah. Go ahead and end the interview uh, now or uh, just the recording aspect of it. And so uh, objectivepersonality.com, I'm going to put it in the comments or just in the uh, info section. And so go yeah. check it out.
and uh, go check it out, especially if you want your world rocked. So go <laughs> go look yeah. at it, and uh, it'll be worth it. All right. Great. Thanks.